Hello everybody and welcome to a new series on this channel. I, I don't know what we're calling this, cinematic theory? I don't know, there's a channel called Film Theory, comment suggestions, but basically I'm here with Simone Salvatore. Hello. And we're going to be covering film theories, ridiculous ones, clever ones, plausible ones, ridiculous ones, and we're going to break it down to determine whether they're true or whether they're bullshit. So first off, we're going to start with, is Kevin McAllister Jigsaw? No. Thanks for watching, everybody. Be sure to subscribe and like the video. I refuse to believe this. You, you cannot convince me this is true. I'm sorry. So is that what this video is? I, I've gone through as much research as possible uh, to find all the facts that could make this possible. Um, so I have this video to convince you. So are you ready? No. In 1990, we all welcomed Home Alone into the world. The charming classic Christmas tale about eight-year-old boy Kevin McAllister, played by Macaulay Culkin, who gets accidentally left behind by his family who are going away on vacation for the holidays. During their absence, Kevin's house gets targeted by the wet bandits, two bumbling burglars, Harry and Mar, played by Joe Pesci and Daniel Stern. It's then up to Kevin to use whatever is at his disposal in order to protect himself and his home from the criminals until his family is able to return to him. A charming enough film that most agree is a must watch every Christmas. But what if I told you that Kevin may have actually grown up to have a rather sinister adulthood? I mean, it would, it, it, it would mess up anyone going through that at eight years old. But did he have to become a serial killer? That's my question. Well, we'll see. Home Alone 2 then followed two years later, which follows the same plot, the same kid, the same burglars, and everything is basically the same except now it's in New York. This is the last we actually see of Macaulay Culkin's Kevin McAllister until we got Home Alone 4, though it's a little unclear whether or not that movie actually remains canon, but we will be coming back to that film later. I feel like, although like everyone disregards Home Alone 4, it is in the timeline, it is in the franchise, so technically we have no choice but to consider it canon. Well, I haven't seen Home Alone 4, so I, I, I stopped at 2, which I feel like was, was the smart choice. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Regardless, there is a theory that Kevin McAllister may have actually grown up to become horror slasher film icon, Jigsaw. Oh, that I'm Jigsaw. That, 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 that Kevin McAllister grew up to, grew up to be Jigsaw from Saw. No. And that's, no, that's how he learned. Never heard that one, yeah, no. yeah, I've heard that one. In 2004, we were introduced to the first Saw film, and for seven years straight, his story was told. A cancer patient named John Kramer, played by Tobin Bell, was disgusted when his cancer treatment was denied, while others who were otherwise healthy didn't seem to appreciate their luck and good health. To make them truly become grateful for their lives, John, along with the help of some others, would capture these people and put them in deadly traps, forcing them to fight for their own survival and ultimately appreciate their lives by the end of it, if they even manage to survive it at all. But how does Home Alone connect with Saw? And how could the two characters from very different universes possibly be linked? They aren't and they don't. Well... <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> the first Home Alone features Kevin using traps on Harry and Marv to protect his home with no ulterior motive. He seems to have fun inflicting the pain, but it's nothing too sinister just yet. However, in its sequel, he clearly seems to enjoy the torture a hell of a lot more. They're in the middle of the Big Apple when he discovers that Harry and Marv are now trying to steal from a children's charity on Christmas Eve, and he decides to take it personally. Kevin not only goes out of his way to lure them into an abandoned house for the physical abuse, but he even says things like, Nice night for a neck injury! Several of these traps are a lot more extreme than in the previous film, and would most certainly murder someone. Electrocution, fire, bricks to the face, explosions. It's very clear that Kevin is also enjoying putting them through this pain. Much like Jigsaw, who would often spy on the traps he's putting his victims in, Kevin even takes joy in tricking the pizza guy into believing that he just heard someone being gunned down, which is definitely a Jigsaw-like trait. Kevin takes way too much pleasure in doing it. It's all coincidence. 
I mean, are you, do you confess that Kevin is a little demented? No. Have you seen Home Alone 2? Well, yes, it's a charming kid's fantasy film. He fries Marv! Well, it's Marv, he deserves it. He sets a rope on fire, it's like a horror film! Well, I'm sure he had good intentions at heart. <laughs> what was the intention of the murder? I'm sorry. In fact, throughout both of the original two Home Alone movies, Kevin shows an incredible lack of control of his temper. His brother Buzz will pick on him and he will attack him without any warning. Considering the size difference between the two, Kevin would still somehow overpower his brother. And one of these outbursts was simply over him missing out on some pizza. Jigsaw would also later put people in traps for the most timid of offences and seem to lose his temper incredibly easily. So you're saying that because all kids are a bit whiny when they're little, that automatically means that they will become serial killers. There's a difference between being whiny and violently attacking your brother because he ate a slice of pizza. Well, it's Buzz. He deserved it. And I'm sure it was very nice pizza. It was just cheese! Who eats margarita pizza? It's the most boring pizza you can get! Kevin's mother would also make him feel unloved and he would attempt to emotionally manipulate her in response. He would even spy on his neighbours or random people in public. All things that the later Jigsaw would become known for. You know that bit in The Incredibles where the teacher says, Coincidence? I think not! What's the opposite of that? You think it's... He... He just... He watches from his window at the neighbours. He he manipulates his mother. His mother's sending him to the attic and All he's like... kids manipulate their parents. So you're telling like, me your son has never lied to you? No. <laughs> That's the worst lie I've ever heard. <laughs> No. He even uses a voice-changing recorder in the sequel, much like John Kramer would do in the Saw films. Kevin would even record his uncle's voice and use it for his own advantage in Home Alone 2. So recording people was always a fun pastime for him. This is Peter McAllister, the father. Up until now, you've simply sat in the shadows, watching others live out their lives. The voice. Sounds just like Jigsaw. Yeah, well, Ghostface from Scream sounds like Christian Bale as Batman. That doesn't mean they're the same person. I mean, they both set traps, they're both psychotic, they both change their voices with recorders. Coincidence. I'm just, I'm just starting. This is just the light evidence. We're going to get into the good stuff. This is the light evidence. Okay, yes! I'll, I'll, I'll brace myself. If you look at the similarities between the traps, you will notice that there is one major one. In both Home Alone and Saw, the traps usually always revolve around what the victim does. The victim nearly always has to activate the trap themselves, whether it be Harry or Marv falling for the bait and walking into a certain room following Kevin or simply activating a decoy, or in Saw, a victim leaning forward or falling for a premeditated section of the game to activate it. Kevin uses fire a few times in his traps, even burning Harry's head to the scalp, while Jigsaw uses candles to completely incinerate an entire man, which could all link back to a childhood fear of. A frequent occurrence in the original Home Alone film is that Kevin is terrified of the furnace. He even imagines it coming to life several times. In Saw 2, a furnace is actually used as a trap, which ends up killing one of the players in the game. It is possible that Jigsaw, if he is indeed Kevin, reverted back to one of his childhood fears. Well, I think anyone would be scared of a furnace. It's just a bit odd that he has a childhood fear of a furnace, and then, oh look, a furnace is in Saw. Coincidence. There's only so many times you can say that. So you're telling me that Lee Winnell sat down and said, hmm... I know what we should do. Let's make our serial killer conveniently similar to Kevin McAllister. Yes. Kevin also likes to booby trap staircases a lot, whether it be by making them slippery with ice or putting nails and tar on them to trick the burglars, specifically nailing Marv in the foot. While in Saw 2, the entire staircase is rigged to collapse underneath the police force, sabotaging them 
and slicing their legs. In Saw 2, we see Jigsaw's hideout and it does bear a strong resemblance to Kevin's own basement in the original Home Alone. The layout of the room, the staircase and even the same furnace. It all looks very similar. Did they all have the same contractor who built the same house and building? I mean... Yes. So Kevin and Jigsaw aren't the same person, but they both just <laughs> had the same builder. Yes. I'm so <laughs> petty. I'm doing everything I can to not be convinced by this. No, 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 I'm not being convinced by it. Are you sure? I mean, you sound like you're opening up to this idea. No. Okay, well, there's more, there's more. Oh, there's more. Okay, let's have a listen. In Home Alone, Kevin first discovers he's been left behind and wanders down into the basement searching for his family. And you can actually see a clown mask at the front of the frame, which bears a strong resemblance to Jigsaw's later iconic doll face. I mean, he's either Jigsaw or he's Pennywise. He had a clown mask! What does that even mean? <laughs> they happen to have very similar looking masks, that's all there is to it. Maybe he's the Joker. What seems more likely to you? The Joker. <laughs> Furthermore, in December of 2015, 25 years after the original film, Macaulay Culkin finally reprised his role as Kevin, taking part in an unofficial spin-off sequel in the form of a short film, in which Kevin is so traumatised by the neglect and abuse by his family, that he now happily puts people in disturbing traps. That's canon. So. No, it's not. It's canon. No. But Colin Culkin's in it. No, he was in an episode of the Angry Video Game Nerd. Is that now canon to the Home Alone franchise as well? Well, yes. He's Jigsaw, because he got angry at a game, which adds to the theory. Even before he's left home alone, Kevin's family neglect him and bully him. Almost every single member of his family seem to have some kind of disdain for the boy, which would most certainly add some psychological trauma. And that's even without the two criminals chasing and trying to kill him. Could it have scarred the boy so much that he grew up to become a serial killer? After all, many serial killers did endure neglect and abuse as a child. Like, ah, he's traumatised and that leads to serial killers. They must be the same person. Or it's just yes. very convenient coincidences. I don't know why you're so opposed to this very plausible theory. Or is he a time traveller? Like, that's my problem. Jigsaw is, a, he's what, 60-something in Saw in the first one. Kevin yeah. is, how old is he in the first one? He's eight, right? Yeah. Yeah. And that takes place in 1990. Saw came out in 2004, presumably takes place in 2004. You're telling me Kevin aged 50 years in the span of 14. We'll, we'll get to that. The theory is that Kevin was so traumatised, he skipped town after the events of the first two films and changed his name, becoming John Kramer. It's believed that he enjoyed the New York experience so much he moved from Chicago out to the East Coast, possibly to Pennsylvania, where the Saw films are set. Both John and Kevin have blue eyes, both have blonde hair, and both even have a similar jawline. I'm just imagining James Wan like doing the casting for Saw, and he's like got a poster of Macaulay Culkin. As soon as someone walks in, nah, nah. <laughs> <laughs> They're doing all the casting based on this little eight-year-old kid. They never find one. Ah, I guess you'll do. Come on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but let's just look at how the two share personality traits. In the original two Home Alone films, there are two specific characters in which everyone is afraid of. Now, sure, Kevin is initially also afraid of them, but he does become the only person who reaches out and talks to them. In conversation, he finds out that the old man has isolated from his son and blames himself for the falling out. While in the sequel, a lady is now homeless after a bad breakup and distances herself from others. In both films, Kevin gives them advice and tries to reach them emotionally, guiding them onto the right path, which seems to help. The old man reconciles with his son and the woman decides to become more outgoing. 
not too unsimilar to Jigsaw, whose entire motif, at least in his mind, is to help people become better people, to learn from their mistakes and amend their own issues. Could it be so unlikely that this man started doing this at such a young age? Yes. Are you, are you telling me that doesn't sound like Jigsaw? He's helping people. By murdering them. No. Well, yes. He's... Well, no, they could escape. If they weren't little bitches, they'd survive. Well, in the first one, he locks up an old man inside a cage full of barbed wire. How's he supposed to get out of that? Well, he likes cutting himself, so he just has to cut himself. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. I don't want to get cancelled again. I'm not making fun of people who cut themselves. However, what goes against this theory is that Kevin was 10 years old in Home Alone 2. But somehow, in just 12 years, he becomes a much older man in Jigsaw. Somewhere in his late 50s or early 60s. Are you ready for this? Are you ready? He can't age 50 years in 14 years. Are you ready? So this calls into question. When do these movies take place? The first two Home Alone films make no acknowledgement of the year they're set, and since there's only two of them, we may just have to assume that they take place in the years they were released. Making Kevin 10 years old in 1992. There are eight- Hang on, hang on. Home Alone 2 is set a year after Home Alone. Yep. And in Home Alone, he's eight. Yep. And then in Home Alone 2, he says he's 10. Yep. But it's a year later. Yeah, I'll point that out in my review. It's all fucked. But there's a reason that they did that, you know. No, there isn't. Oh, there is. Okay. There are eight Saw films, at least at the time of this video, which gives us enough room to try and search for a year. These movies also never directly address when they take place. They often do acknowledge how much time has passed, though. The first movie came out in 2004, and Amanda's in a flashback trap, which is five months earlier making it either earlier that same year or late 2003. In Saw 4, which takes place at the same time as Saw 3, just run with it, six months have passed since the second movie as Donnie Wahlberg's character was held captive. But the sequels constantly go back and forth with time to show us John becoming Jigsaw. The writers have come out to claim that his tests and games spanned around two years. So if the first Saw film is set the year that it came out, John would have become the serial killer in 2002, which would make it impossible for Kevin to become him as he would have only been 20 years old. Ah, so I win. You don't win. You know, nah, 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 nah. But remember when I said the films never directly address when they take place? That doesn't mean they never subtly do. In Saw 4, we get a flashback to a man named Cecil, unintentionally injuring Jigsaw's wife and causing her to miscarry their child. For revenge, John kidnaps Cecil and we see a festival going on for the Chinese Year of the Pig. Now this is important because the Year of the Pig is the 12th yearly cycle of the Chinese Zodiac. So when does this take place? Well, this means that Saw 4 either takes place in 1995 when Kevin would have just been 13, or 2007, when he would have been 25. Which, yeah, I love Tobin Bell, but he really isn't passing for 25 anytime soon. But this poses a question. Saw 4 did indeed come out in 2007, so maybe it is set the same year that it was released. However, remember, this scene is a flashback, and this was just as John was becoming Jigsaw in the first place. So this would mean that his death in Saw 3 would have been two years later, making him dying in 2009, when Kevin would have been 27. So that's it, right? Case closed. Kevin can't be Jigsaw, right? Yes. I win. No, 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 no! We've got an explanation! In Jigsaw, the 2017 movie, the film has two timelines going on at once. The main trap is actually 10 years earlier, which a brief glimpse of a computer screen shows us is in fact 2007. However, in present day, it's consistently said that this trap was 10 years ago. Now that's worth noting because the police also say it's been a decade since John's death. 
However, this is impossible. When we see John, he's perfectly healthy as he was in all the other flashbacks, like with Cecil, as he was just becoming Jigsaw. The cancer hasn't taken its toll yet, so we're led to believe that this flashback isn't actually 10 years ago. It has to be around 8 years ago when he was still relatively healthy, making the flashback 2007, which coincides with the Cecil scene, and his death 2009, which also coincides with Saw 4's narrative but making it impossible for Jigsaw to take place 10 years after John's death. The film came out in 2017, but if it's 10 years after he died, it would be set in 2019. John's dead at this point, so that's irrelevant. But it seems unlikely Kevin could possibly become Jigsaw. In fact, if Saw 4 was indeed set in the year of the pig, and we're assuming Kevin McAllister grows up to become Jigsaw in his late 50s or early 60s, Going by the cycle rotation of the Chinese Zodiac calendar, Kevin became John, who then became Jigsaw at the age of 61 in the year 2043. Saw takes place in 2043. No. Why not? Because it doesn't look like... They've advanced very much in technology. Like tiny tape recorders, and little, and... little flip phones, and br Nokia bricks from like two thousand and one. And all the TVs are like wicked old. I think, I think they have VCRs are still being used. However, Saw films have been known to mess with timelines a lot in the past. Jigsaw is also set ten years earlier, as well as being ten years later. Saw 3 and 4 take place at the same time, and even the later sequels go back and forth with time travel more times than James Cameron. So this brings forth an extra theory. What if Jigsaw was actually a time traveller? Run that by me again. What if Jigsaw was actually a time traveller? No. Of all the things in the Saw films, you're telling me that would be unlikely. Yes, because, I mean, they're set in some basis of reality. It's like if, I don't know, it's like if in, I don't know, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, they were like, oh, Ferris can shoot lasers from his eyes. <laughs> now, this may sound ridiculous on first glance, but let's break down some of the things John does in the films. His entire MO consists of predetermining human action, but a lot of the time it's beyond impossible. In Saw 4, John somehow knew that he was going to die and was able to predict Amanda's entire actions, therefore planning a whole extra game after his death, which all takes place at the same time as the events of 3. Either Jigsaw can control time and has seen all of this unfold before, or he is actually a master psychic. Which seems more probable? Master psychic. He literally swallows a tape <laughs> for his autopsy. Well, that just means the writers are morons. That doesn't mean he's a time traveller. There's no logic in the Saw films. Throwing in time travel, to me, doesn't seem that out there. Well, yeah. <laughs> he's not Doctor Who. He doesn't have a TARDIS. He's not just going to be like, ah, oh, whoops-a-daisies, I'm going to pop back ten years and change the future. I mean, he's invented all of these intricate traps. Maybe he's invented time travel. <laughs> Throughout the series, we get multiple flashbacks to John always planning ahead to extreme capabilities. The series has often gone back and rewrote history based on who was helping Jigsaw at the time. Firstly, it's Amanda. Then, oh no, it's also Detective Hoffman. Then, oh, by the way, it's also, also Dr. Gordon. And then also, 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 it's that guy from Jigsaw. But this creates a long list of plot holes. Why would Amanda kidnap a doctor in Saw 3 to remove John's tumour when he allegedly always had Dr. Gordon working for him this whole time and he was far more qualified for the surgery anyway? Why isn't Gordon around in any of these flashbacks? I mean, I guess they do kind of say that Jigsaw was keeping him hidden, but like, he's nowhere, there's no hints of him being around at all. Why isn't Hoffman seen during some early flashbacks of Amanda? Where the hell is this guy for all of it? The only way any of these make sense is if John, or someone working for John, is in fact going back through time and altering the events of the films. So you are telling me that Jonathan Kramer 
of the Saw franchise is in fact the T-1000. I'm saying it's a possibility. The amount of ridiculousness I've heard during this call has been absurd. The timeline of the films themselves is also all over the place and it's unclear how they're ordered. So fine, maybe Jigsaw can control time, but how does that connect to Kevin McAllister? He's just a kid and the Home Alone movies never time jump, do they? They do, you know. Don't look at me like that. No, they don't. Even if you want to consider Home Alone 4 not canon, we could use this as an example. Kevin is 10 years old in the second film, and yet here, he's back to being 9 for some reason. I'm 9 years old. If this is in fact a direct sequel to the original, and we're to assume Home Alone was set in the year of its release, 1990, this film would be set in 91. But the technology shown clearly is far too advanced to be in the 90s. Furthermore, everything has changed. Harry and Marv have gone their separate ways and Marv is now married, which isn't even mentioned in Home Alone 2, so it's not a prequel either. Furthermore, all of Kevin's other siblings have completely vanished, and all that remains are his brother Buzz and sister Megan. The rest of his family have disappeared and there's no explanation. It's almost as if someone went through time and altered the course of things, disrupting the entire timeline. I just made Home Alone 4 a lot more interesting and entertaining than it actually is. <laughs> but even if we were to say Home Alone 4 isn't canon and it doesn't count, it's even evident in the first two films. Alright, what magical argument are you going to pull out of your ass this time? In the original, Kevin clearly says that he is 8 years old, but in the sequel, he's somehow jumped to 10. I'm 8 years old. I'm 10 years old. Now sure, there is a 2 year gap between films, but Home Alone 2 makes a point to constantly mention that only one year has passed. He was left at home by accident last year. And it's not exactly like Kevin could have had an extra birthday between them. They're both set at Christmas. How could Kevin jump from 8 to 10 in just a single year? Unless he can alter time. And just to throw this out there, Kevin seems to know what Harry and Marv are going to do before they do them. No! No! <laughs> just no! 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 He, ma he makes a compelling argument. <laughs> Saw creator James Wan has actually showed support for this theory, so it all depends on you and whether or not you think it holds any weight. So final thoughts, what do you think? Absolute bollocks. So all jokes aside, I will say, in order for Kevin to have grown up to become Jigsaw, the unlikeliness, the ridiculousness, you, you have to stretch your disbelief so much. I'm gonna say it's debunked. We've debunked it like I guess it I guess it's possible, but you've gotta stretch it. It's like it's either set in the future or they can time travel and it's such a stretch. And is anyone really pushing for this theory to be true like it's not exactly a theory that people are like yes kevin's a serial killer doesn't really add much to either film <laughs> yeah we, we're gonna say no let us know what you guys think and what theories you want to see us covered how'd you feel after that you got a bit of a headache a little bit <laughs> join us next time where we're gonna look at a classic film that recently people are getting trying to get cancelled. So we're going to look at that and maybe even ruin it a bit more for you. Help. <laughs>